on today's Locked On Texan podcast, the GM speaks. Nick Casario took the podium, so of course, we discussed our takeaways from that. Going to be very interesting. What will the addition of Tyler Johnson mean for this very thin wide receiver group, and which member of the practice squad should we most likely see this season? Cody, let's not hold him off any longer. Start the show. You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to a Thursday edition of the Locked On Texan Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm John Hickman, joined by Cody Davis, here to discuss the Houston Texans. They made the cuts. They picked up a player on the waiver waiver wire. Uh, they also went ahead and got their 15 spots taken care of out of 16 for the practice squad. They do have one spot open, but the Houston Texans are shaping out their roster. Cody, what are we expecting to see the next couple of days when uh, the coach game rolls around? Well, as I alluded to on yesterday, expect to see this Houston Texans team continue to make changes to their 53-man roster. On yesterday, we all had an opportunity to hear from general manager Nick Casario, and that was the overall theme of his press conference. Look, the 53-man roster is what it is as of August 31st, 2022, but every single day, every single moment, Nick Casario, Coach Lovey Smith, his his his, his recruiting staff, everybody that's a part of the Houston Texans are go- is going to continue to build and shape out this roster. And they're trying to put the best roster together ahead of the 2022 campaign really quick. Just so you guys can know and understand why and how Nick Casario and this organization is always trying to reshape and revamp this roster. As soon as we left out of NRG Stadium, we got news that the Houston Texans did end up releasing running back Royce Freeman, which is very interesting because early on in the day, they decided to bring back Marlon Mack to the practice squad. Now, we're going to talk about the practice squad members in the second segment, but as of right now, John, listeners and viewers, As I mentioned, as I just alluded to, the Texans are always trying to revamp this roster. And there are several holes within this roster where they're going to try to fill. And John, the biggest pickup on yesterday came by the way that the Houston Texans did claim Tyler Johnston. (laughs) Tyler Johnson off of waivers. As everybody knows, this is a three-year prospect. Um, a three-year wide receiving prospect who came over after being cut by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Tuesday. And before we go any further, John, listeners and viewers, I want to let you guys take a moment to hear what Nick Casario had to say about what went into the decision to sign Johnson. Yeah, uh, has some experience, productive player at the University of Minnesota, uh, came from a good program, and PJ does a nice job, runs a good program. Um, you know, fifth round pick. Um, I'd say, you know, had some opportunities last season in Tampa behind some pretty good players down there. So I would say in their situation, I think they ended up keeping six or seven receivers. I think Darden has a role in the kicking game. You know, Miller's a fast guy and they signed Julio. So it's kind of one of those situations where, you know, it wasn't a, an opportunity for him there. True would have an opportunity elsewhere in the league. So again, you know, we really have a big commitment to him, but, you know, he has some size. Has uh, decent playing strength. He has decent run after catch. You know, has decent hands. Um, so when we get here, when we get him here, we'll see what it looks relative to the rest of the group. Again, it's about him taking advantage of the opportunities. And you know, if it's good enough, he'll be around. If it's not, then you know, we'll look for somebody else. But you know, he's been a decent player. Um, you know, he's been productive over the course of his career at different points. So I'm excited about the opportunity to add him to the club. Go ahead. Once again, that was Nick Casario talking about the decision that went into the Houston Texans claiming. Tyler Johnson off of waivers. John, now when you take a look at this wide receiving core, I know, you know, there are no big time names there, but 
I kind of feel a little bit more confident in the direction of this wide receiving core with the addition of Tyler Johnson. You're talking about a guy that's 6'1". You could play him on the outside. You could play him on the slot. This is a guy who has recorded 529 yards on 48 catches with two touchdowns throughout the first two years of his career as a member of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I know down in Tampa he was playing with the GOAT and Tom Brady. However, I do believe when you take a look at Johnson, there is some untapped potential that he can possibly reach here in the city of Houston. I like the move for one reason, and that's to provide depth to this very thin wide receiver group. Uh, Johnson is a player that has played well in games where he was needed to step up due to the player ahead of him being out with injury. In week five of 2020, Scotty Miller and Chris Godwin was out at the time. That was a game where Johnson stepped up four catches, 61 yards. 2021, the Bucks had a Brown problem, not UPS, but an Antonio Brown problem, Johnson stayed ready for whenever his number was called. Week three, no Brown. He went three catches for 63 yards. During the stretch of games where Brown was absent during week seven through 15, excuse me, he recorded 241 yards. And the infamous walkout game by Antonio Brown against the New York Jets, uh, Johnson had 41 yards after Brown's departure with a big 27-yard pickup to help set up the game-winning drive. And so uh, that is what he can do. When you look at positives versus negatives, those are all positives for a player who's coming into a situation where there's no Julio Jones, there's no Mike Evans, there's no Chris Godwin. Those caliber of players aren't here. He was a touchdown machine at the University of Minnesota with 25 TDs between his junior and senior year. Also had nearly 2,500 yards. He's got talent. I'm not saying he'll be a key piece for the Houston Texans for the future, but as of right now, what the Houston Texans ha has, um, he only adds to it and he doesn't take away. One positive that I love from Johnson was his ability to earn reps from year one to year two. Year one, 25% of snaps on the field. The uh, Year two in 2021, 52% of snaps on the field. I will say that injuries played a factor into him getting on the field, but he did earn those reps being available, making a man miss in space from time to time. He's more physical than you may think unless you watch the Bucks play some games. So he's a physical receiver. He's not afraid to get dirty, get in the mix, throw a block out there as well. These are all the characteristics of a general manager that a general manager here in Houston will love, and Nick Serio. Come in, do your job, go home. And so he only adds to this group. He doesn't take away. And I think that he will be able to compete with getting those snaps. He may take some snaps away from Chris Moore as the season progresses. It's almost that time of year, start of the NFL season. I love this time of year. And if you're into sports betting or fantasy, you need the competitive edge to win. That's why I highly recommend the Elias Game Plan app is the ultimate, and I mean ultimate, sports betting and fantasy companion for the NFL, NBA, and MLB. Elias Game Plan app is the only sports app from the most trusted name in sports stats, Elias Sports Bureau, the official statistician of U.S. Pro Sports League, including the NFL. Their app lets you access team and player stats, head-to-head -head team comparison, and Elias insights from the Elias Sports Bureau research team. They got everything that you need right there, right here on your phone. Download the Elias game plan app. Another neat feature that they offer, player news and league-validated player stats and team records, expert game analysis for betting, building your fantasy team, and, you know, just kind of for impressing your friends, right? Perfect for the preseason. You get the player previews to help you draft a winning team and team preview so you know what to expect as the regular season kicks off. And with new features like player injury analysis available all the time, you can take your game to the next level. NFL season is right around the corner, September 11. Do not wait. Download the Elias Game Plan app today. Right now, I got a special offer for you. Whenever you guys subscribe, get a 14-day free trial off a monthly subscription plan. Come on, man. Come on, man. 
But you got to use Locked On NFL promo code. Again, the promo code is Locked On NFL. Find the Elias Game Plan Sporting app in the App Store or Play Store today. And don't forget to use my promo code Locked On NFL. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, to this Thursday installment of Locked On Texans and Yesterday was the day where every organization put together their practice squad roster and the Houston Texans did the same. And it's kind of funny and ironic because it seemed like every single player that reporters, podcasters, fans, everybody had problems with. You're talking about Grilling Arnold, um, Drew Estrada, Johnny Johnson III. Um, it just seemed like a lot of these players who were cut by the Houston Texans on Tuesday, they actually still end up being part of this organization on Wednesday by making it to the Houston Texans practice squad. And John, listeners and viewers, I know a lot of people might see a practice squad roster. You might think to yourself, well, these are players that might might not never have an opportunity to actually get out there on Sundays and showcase what they can do and actually play for the Houston Texans. However, going back to Nick Casario's press conference, one thing I love about his press conference was the fact that he said that even though we're looking at 53 men every single week, we're not going to exclude the guys as part of that practice squad roster. Depending on who we play, match up, and everything else in between, those guys will still have an opportunity to play each and every week, which was very important to me because guess who was part of the practice squad roster? The first one, Marlon Mack. Now, before moving forward, let's listen to what Nick Casario had to say about the decision to retain Marlon Mack on the Texans practice squad. Yeah, I mean, you can carry X number of players on a roster. So, you know, I would say Marlon's had a good training camp. He's a player we wanted to continue to work with in some capacity. Um, there was an opportunity for him to come back to the practice squad. Uh, he's had a good attitude. He's worked really hard in the preseason. He's been productive with his opportunity. So, again, this is about we talked about. You can have X number of players on a roster. You're going to have certain depth at positions you carry on the roster, and then you're going to have some depth off the roster. And all those players are eligible to play on a weekly basis, and that's how they have to approach it. And we also understand that it's not just veteran players, but any player on a practice squad, whether it's for the Texans or throughout the course of the league, is essentially a free agent. So that player can leave at any point to go to a 53-man roster. So whether it's Raylan Arnold, whether it's Marlon Mack, so it's all about the opportunity and what the situation is. So we treat the player the same way. We don't look at him any differently. But, you know, Marlon's been good to work with, and we're happy that we have the opportunity to bring him back on the practice squad. And, you know, nothing's really changed from his perspective or his mindset. Yeah, Marlon Mack definitely took advantage of his opportunity. <laughs> Once again, you're looking at a guy who recorded 90 yards on 21 carries during the Houston Texans' three preseason schedule. John, I like the fact that they have an opportunity to keep Marlon Mack. I do believe come week one of the regular season, of course, look, he's not going to be the starting running back. However, I do believe that he will still be a part of this organization come week one because if the Houston Texans, if they want to rely on their run game, look, Mac was arguably the second best running back throughout preseason, throughout training camp, throughout OTAs, throughout mandatory mini camp. Whenever he was on the field, he stood out. And I'm hoping that we see Marlon Mack on this 53 man roster throughout the season more so than not. Yeah. And I kind of want to highlight a few players that are on the Houston Texan practice squad. Number one, of course, Marlon Mack. And I'll get into that. But then you look at Jalen Camp. That's a player who. And I personally wanted to make the 53-man roster. I thought he was one of those players that Houston could possibly use in the red zone. You got Marlon Mack. You got Jalen Camp. Graylin Arnold is another mm. player that is brought that was brought back on the practice squad. Uh, also, Johnny Johnson the third was another player. And I think it's very important to mention that someone else came home, and that's Jordan Akins, <laughs> tight end. But – Interesting enough, those are all positions. And the reason why I wanted to highlight it is because I think those are all positions Houston could really benefit from upgrading, right? When you look at the tight end position, where is Farrell Brown? Will he be available and ready for week one? The mental state of Brevin Jordan, will he be able to make a, a leap in year two? Like we are expecting from all of these year two players. 
right? And so then you transition over to the wide receiver group. You got Chris Moore. You just got brought in Tyler Johnson off of waivers. Philip Dorsett, Nico Collins, Brandon Cooks. Jalen Kemp and Johnny Johnson could very well see themselves playing some football this year. And when I look at Akins again, I want to switch circle back to him. He's a player that played for the Houston Texans before. This tight end group is very thin. Mark Shrek is also on this on this uh, practice squad list as well. Graydon Arnold is a player that I would love to see play football for the Texans this year at that safety position. We talked about Eric Murray yesterday, how maybe that dead cap hit was just too much to take on, which is probably why they kept him on the roster and moved on from Graydon Arnold. But, Cody, you and I know how highly they spoke of Graylin Arnold throughout this mm-hmm. entire process. Not only did they speak highly of him just because, but he earned those wor- those great words by his play, by his practice, you know, OTAs, uh, training camp, during the games. So they brought back players at positions that I really think still have a question mark. Like when, you, when, when Nick Casario say, well, each week some of these guys may play, I think that's really true. By week one, they released Royce Freeman, who was on the initial 53-man roster. How long until we see Marlon Mack activated, right? Like, that's the question. How long until we may see, uh, before Jalen Camp and Johnny Johnson, how long before we see Jordan Akins? Like, I think these are questions that matter because those groups are not only thin right now, but they are lacking the world-class talent and these world-class athletes compared to other teams in the league and so great question and great response there but i think by nick Casario, hey guys what we have right now is not the end all be all as my boy fat joe used to, says yesterday's price is not today's price so come hmm. week eight week 17 is not week 18 and i also believe that because of some of these players that are on the practice squad because they just waived <clears throat> Royce Freeman, Houston will search for some of these free agents out there to bring in as well. I don't think this is the end all be all as of right now. Then again, I can see Houston not doing anything and rolling with the guys that they have currently on this roster in the practice squad. I'm a little bit conflicted on how to feel about Jordan Aiken's return because, look, first and foremost, didn't he leave on bad terms? Well, everybody left on bad term last year. But, you know, first and foremost, when I take a look at Aikens, I kind of feel like the Texans just got another version of a tight end that they already have in Pharaoh Brown and Brevin Jordan. You're talking about two tight ends who are more useful as pass catchers, and their blocking is modest at best. And we already know that when you take a look at Jordan Aikens, look, 2019 2020 campaign this is a guy that recorded over 800 receiving yards last year of course being with tim kelly they misutilized him he was being more so as a blocking tight end and the man recorded a little bit over 200 receiving yards i do believe with him being a part of this organization with a better offensive coordinator i do believe that pep hamilton will utilize him a hell of a lot better than Tim Kelly ever did. However, John, listeners and viewers, when I take a look at what the Texans need at that tight end position, they're still missing that tight end that can actually help in the run blocking, um, in the pass blocking, more so in the run blocking, because that was part of the main reason why I would like to see the Houston Texans go after OJ How, um, OJ Howard. So, like I said, I, I'm kind of conflicted to feel um, on how to feel about this. You know, I don't think that they're going to depart from Brevin Jordan. He is still young. However, Pharaoh Brown is up there in age. And, John, I just don't understand why Nick Casario and the Texans will put themselves in a position where you're looking at your tight end group again and your top three tight ends are Aikens, Brown, and Jordan. Well, they needed to bring in somebody that is familiar with what they're trying to do offensively. Been in this but, but here's the thing, though. Before. According to Pep Hamilton and, <clears throat> and, and, and Davis Mills, we about to see a whole new offense. Right, but he knows the franchise. He knows the quarterback. He, he knows some of the players on this offense, and he knows some of the concepts that Pep Hamilton is trying to bring. I get that it can be confusing. However, this is just one of those moves. Like, Nick Casario makes these decisions, and – He's the only one that can justify it. Like I think sometimes we get caught up in trying to justify what he's doing. 
there is no justification outside of what he believes and what he believes is what he did. Like, I just, that's the kind, kind of guy Nick Casario is. And we just got to live with it. Um, I do think that it's interesting right now that, excuse me, guys, still fighting this. I don't know what's going on. I'm sick here. But I do think it's interesting that I wanted to mention the Houston Texans on their initial 53-man roster. They are keeping 10 defensive linemen, eight linebackers, including Jake Hansen. So we talked a lot about the offense so far in this show. Understand this. The defense is what's going to make this team win or lose games. Are you one of those people who think it's okay to drive stoned? What's the worst that can happen? You end up driving below the speed limit? It's no big deal, right? Wrong. The truth is your reaction time slows way down when you're high. You're not only putting yourself in danger, but everyone around you. Stop kidding yourself. It's not okay to drive high. If you've been using marijuana in any form, do not get behind the wheel of a car if you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, get a DUI. Thanks for making Locked On Texans your first listen today. Now make your second listen to Locked On Fantasy Football Podcast. Find intellectual fantasy expert Vinny Iyer, who brings over 20 years of NFL expertise and a unique angle to give you the most, the best moves that no one else has. Get ready for your fantasy draft with Locked On Fantasy Football. Cody, one thing, takeaway that I wanted to talk about before we get out of here for today's show, is Nick Casario talking about Davis Mills. And also, by the way, didn't mention that Chris Conley will be back probably sooner than later. So take that Ooh. with a grain of salt. But <laughs> Davis, I mean, not, not Davis Mills, Nick Casario was asked about Davis Mills. And he said that Davis has an opportunity in front of him. He's got an exciting opportunity. I think the team is excited about that opportunity. Before I address that comment, who would win in a dance around battle between Bobby Brown and Nick Asirio? Put Raphael Stone in there as well. But who's going to win the dance around battle? Because Nick Asirio can dance around a question. So could Raphael Stone. Um... Now, remind you, Bobby Brown, new addition, <laughs> the king of R&B, is my prerogative. I don't know. That's a tough one. If it isn't love. That's a tough one. They're going. They, they're both to give Bobby Brown a run for his money. Well, that's what Nick Casario does. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I, I thought this was a comment that this comment, I think, directly links to next year's draft. You have an opportunity. The team is excited about the opportunity. Davis Mills has an opportunity in front of him. Opportunity was said three times. And I think because they are not married yet. Hmm. And I think that's fair. When I when I look at this still a third round quarterback who may have the potential to be a 10 year franchise perennial pro bowler. Or we could just be wrong about all of this hype. And that's the reality of it. Uh, and when I read Nick Casario say things like opportunity in front of him, and, um, I think that spells, son, you have 17 games to prove whether or not we're going to go with a quarterback next year or we're going to invest more into you. Because like it or not, no matter how you feel, they have not invested in Davis Mills. Now, what Excuse me. What they have invested in, I think they've invested in Pep Hamilton. Speaking directly to drafting Kenyon Green and Damian Pierce. I think that they have invested in what they want this offense to look like for the future as, as long as Pep Hamilton is here. Speaking directly to... Pep Hamilton getting John Mechie. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to play this year due to leukemia, but he'll be available for next year. We go back last year. Nick Casario brought in a big body receiver in, in the name of Nico Collins, who we are expecting to have a bigger year. So they are investing in what the future of this franchise will be under Nick Casario's tenure as GM, not necessarily the quarterback in Davis Mills. Davis Mills is in a position where 
if you don't do good, well, they'll bring somebody else in next year, and then they're actually going to invest in him. They needed to invest it in Davis Mills this year. I think they did a poor job of doing so. And he has 17 games to work with what he has. Now, do I think his job is going to be a lot easier this year? The addition of Damian Pierce, Keon Green, I think is going to be monumental in the success this offense can have this year. And if that run game is what we think it can be, if it is a run team, uh, a running team that can give you between 100 to 110 yards a game, hover around that mark, that does a lot for Davis Mills. Now teams are going to look at you running the ball. This opens up so much more in terms of fakes, in terms of play actions, in terms of in terms of getting the ball out quicker. This is what I'm expecting to see out of this offense. And we mentioned it a couple of days ago. They're going to run. They're going to have opportunities to get the ball out quickly. And then they're going to take their shots every now and then, according to what we've seen so far, even at training camp and practice. We have something stored away. You got to practice on some of those things. And the offense hasn't been necessarily explosive during practice. So, Davis Mills, you got two fans here on the Locked On Texan podcast who hmm. want to see you do well. Uh, believe you have the opportunity to do well. I have a stake bet on you doing well. <laughs> uh, but if we are being honest with ourselves and when we look at the young quarterbacks in the league, and I've said this over and over again, I'm going to continue to say it. You look at Herbert, you look at Burrow, uh, Kyler Murray, and you look at Trevor Lawrence, you look at the kid in uh, – in New York, Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson. Um, who was the number one quarterback come out this year? You look look at Kenny Pickett, drafted in the first round. Look at the amount of talent that's around him. So, whether they was brought in the year before or their franchise invested into it the year of, there's only two other, three other quarterbacks that I believe are in a bad situation in terms of talent around them: Justin Fields, Mac Jones, and Davis Mills. And the world is on their shoulders to succeed. Will they? I don't know. The talent isn't there. This isn't 1988. It's 2022. And you need somebody, more than one person, to help out this offense. And, look, and I've been saying this for a long time. That is where my confidence and belief in Davis Mill lies because I go back and I take a look at the situation that he was in last year. We already know what type of shenanigans that was going on in, in, off of 16 and Kirby last year. And the young man still ended up being arguably the second best rookie quarterback. And I understand why the Houston Texans and Nick Casario – well, I'm going to say Nick Casario because when you talk when you talk Davis Mills to Lovey Smith, he does sell you more so on the fact that he believes that Davis Mills could be the quarterback of the future for this organization. However, what I would say is this organization does have a belief in Davis Mills and John, I 100% agree with you. Everything is on the line for Davis Mills this year because the quarterback class in 2023 is looking damn good as of right now. But I say all that just to say, when you look at what Davis and Mills was drafted, you take a look at the situation he was in. By the way, you remember going into the 2021 draft when we was trying to decide whether or not the Houston Texans should take a quarterback, there was two other names that people were looking at, including you and I, Ian Book and especially Kelly Mond. Both no, of those guys. I, 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 remember, no, I, well, Kyle I Trask. was. I, oh, Kyle Trask, Kyle Trask. Ian Book and Kelly Mond are not a part of a 53-man roster. Ian Book literally just got picked up off of waivers um, by the Philadelphia Eagles, and I'm not sure what took place with Kelly Mond on yesterday. He probably a free agent. But I say all that just to say, as of right now, when you take a look at mid-round quarterbacks who was drafted around the third, fourth round of that 2021 draft class. Davis Mills has already exceeded that expectation because of what he was able to do, especially during those last five games of the regular season. Now, Nick Casario, Lovey Smith, you and I, fans, other reporters, everyone, everyone would like to know, can he not only replicate that same success that he showcased on his last five starts of last season, but can it also be better? And most importantly, can it also be more consistent? 
I'm rooting for Davis Mills, and I'm hoping that we're talking about him being the starting quarterback for this organization beyond the 2022 campaign. Absolutely. Also, I want to mention, I've seen a lot of people mention this player that Houston should look at adding on the waiver wire. We talked about it last year, running back Trey Sermon. That was a running back that I said everybody should keep their eye out on. Uh, the relationship between he and, you know, uh, Kyle Shanahan, the 49ers wasn't looking too good. He has been cut. We are third on the waiver wire here in Houston. Do I think that they will add him? No. <laughs> Thank you guys for checking out today's episode of the Locked On Texan podcast. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Locked On Texans and subscribe to the Locked On Texan YouTube page under the name Locked On Texans, of course. And as always, I'm your host, Cody Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody, C-O-T-Y-D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.